Hi, this is Corey Rogers, VP of Marketing for National Equipment Dealers. Today we're here in Conway, South Carolina, and behind me you'll see a Barco 930B industrial wheeled tractor. This machine works great with a pre noth mulching head. Uh, we're going to get with John Flournoy, our forestry and mulching specialist, and John's going to walk us all around the machine and talk about the features and benefits of these great machines and how Ned can support you in all of your forestry and mulching needs. Good afternoon. I'm John Flournoy. I'm uh, one of the forestry mulching specialists here at Nas National Equipment Dealers in the Conway branch. Um, been doing this business about 25 years now. We're going to do a uh, bit of a walk around of this brand new Barco 930B. Uh, this has a print off M650H 2350 HD, which means heavy duty head, designed by print off specifically for these larger mulching machines like this Barco. Uh, the tractor itself is uh, running a Cummins QSL 9 320 horsepower engine. The drive is all hydrostatic. It's four-wheel drive all the time. It's got differential locks so you can lock the differentials if you're in a bind somewhere and need more, more traction forward or back. Uh, it's got a tightly sealed pressurized cab so no dust gets into the cab of these things. Plus it's so quiet it's got a lot of insulation and, and sound deadening properties that allow me to sit in the cab and work and talk on the telephone at the same time if I need to, which I usually need to. Uh, the cab actually floats, so you've got an isolation of the cab from the frame so that it doesn't beat the crap out of your operator, pardon the French. Um, and I just want to get into the tractor and I'll show these features to you as we walk around the machine. All right, so this is the Printoff M650H, it's M650-2350HD which means a heavy duty, which means that this head was uh, developed by Printoff for us about two years ago to um, take the abuse that it takes on these larger tractors. So when, you when I walk around this thing, I'm gonna point out some features about it that, are, that, that will show how that works. So first off, the brush guard on this thing is a lot heavier than the original brush guards were on the original machines. As you can see, it's very well built, it's solid. It's a hydraulic push guard, so you can actually push into heavier material with it. The door flap is a much heavier metal and a heavier design than the originals and the ones we used on the other ones. We've got AR400 wear steel as the uh, wear plates and wear liners. They're all the way through, the through behind the rotor, through the housing. They're bolted in instead of welded in, so you can actually change them without having to take a torch out. They all have counter cutters on them. The purpose of the counter cutters is to keep processing the material as the head pulls the material in. It's coming through and pulling, pulling through these counter cutters and it mulches it up in a finer manner, quicker and faster and on one pass instead of two or three passes to get the final product. This has a control bite rotor on it. Uh, Printout calls it a BCS or a bite control system. This is similar to a Denny Seamoff head other than it has uh, rakers or ramps up to the tool instead of the discs that go all the way around. One of the advantages of that is that unlike having the disc all the way around, when you're trying to get a tree that you've put a pine tree down and you've peeled it and now you've got a flat laying there like a thin board, very hard to pick it up with a continuous disc because that disc is pushing the thing back on the ground. With this system, with the rakers, you've got a lot of open space all through the head. The tools are laid out across the head for the same reason, they're scattered around. So you've got a lot of space for that to pick it up and this ramp doesn't nail it to the ground. So this actually, when you have flats and small stuff on the ground, you're trying to pick up this actually like a vacuum cleaner. So it makes it more productive in the end. This has a capability of the chipper blades, which you see here, which are sharpenable blades. It also takes a triple tip carbide blade that also goes in the same spot. These blades are sharpenable. You sharpen them from underneath with an angle grinder. If you're smart, you touch them up a couple times a day. Um, there are people, however, I will say that use them and never touch them at all. They just run them down until they're completely wore out and throw them away and go again. Depends on how much quality product you want. Also depends on the size of material that you're trying to take. Sharp blades will cut wood, big trees a lot faster, a lot easier than dull ones. It has these cleaner teeth on the side. These are carbide. These are designed just to keep the mud and debris from building up against the housing. Also has an exclusion ring. The purpose of that is to keep wire and other things from getting down into behind the rotor and, in, and next to the actual bearing system. These have uh, poly chain drive belts now. 
which is behind here. And this is a hydraulic, hydraulically driven head, so you've got a hydraulic motor on either side, and you've got a pump, a designated pump in this tractor running about 100 gallons a minute at 5,000 PSI running this head. And that's one of the things about the Barco that most people don't have. It's got awesome power to the head. So we're moving on to the Barco, there's some features. I'm just gonna walk around and point out the different things about the Barco that I know about it. One of them is that Barco in this new iteration in the, in the, uh, uh, the latest series, the 2021, 2022 models and up, they've got a heavier linkage system for mounting the head. They've got heavier pins, heavier metal, heavier cylinders. Uh, these cylinders are also, these bladders are designed to be mounted and easily taken off rather than having them tied directly into the machine like some are, so that's a much easier system to maintain on the pistons. Moving on around, we put 67L tires on our Barcos because most of our contractors like the stability that gives them. It also helps them stand up in wet situations and they're more stable in, in uh, uneven terrain. Uh, the standard Barco comes with a 28L tire, which is just fine, especially if you're down in Florida or areas where it's all flat and you don't have a lot of swamps you're going through, they're just fine. But we do the two, with 67Ls because that's the most popular tire with our contractors like Aspen Tree and, and, and uh, Burford Tree and people like that. A couple of things I like about these machines is Barco has taken some of the service aspect and combined it all. We have a port here, which if you move over here, I can point out. All of, your, all of your bushings are, are greased from this one point. You do this once a day, there's, you see there's four in there and it tells you what they're doing. The right steering cylinder, left steering cylinder, right front axle, left front pivot. So that all can be greased from just this point right here, which makes it very easy for the people maintaining the tractor. Also, you can open up so you can get into the actual drive line. There are a couple of universal joints. There's one here, there's one back here, and there's one back here that you have to grease about every month or so. They say every 200 hours, I do it once a month. Okay, the other things that have changed on the Barco is the side panels, the door panels. On the older version of the Barco, these door panels were just two panels. They slid into a notch and they latched. So anytime you had to check the oil, check anything, change the filter, whatever you had to do, you had to get up there, pull those heavy panels out, put them on the ground, and then go do what you needed to do. The other thing they used to do is they used to vibrate around a lot, so they would move around and sometimes fall out and whatever. Barco's redesigned this. Some of the features we started with, like places to get at the kill switch, places to get at checking your oil. Uh, you've got a port, a lockable port, where anything you have to get at on a daily basis, you can just open that port and get in. You don't have to take the panels out. The panels are also put in, locked in, and bolted in so that they stay put until you really need to take them off. So on this side, that panel gets you to the kill switch. This panel gets you into the def tank. Also, they've put a feature on these tractors. If you've got a fire extinguisher in a cab, if you have smoke coming out of here, you think you have a fire, you can poke that end of that fire extinguisher through here and exhaust it into the engine and put a fire out without having to take panels off or get too close to it yourself. If it's really on fire, just get the heck away from it. Fuel tank, this is the fuel tank, 127 gallons of fuel. It's got a fill cap on top with a lid, a locking lid that closes over it. So while we're here, one thing I want to talk about a little bit is the way the machine is actually manufactured. So Barco used something called, like it's referred to as overlapping welds. So when you're butting things together, they make sure the weld goes, overlaps the other weld, so you don't have places for stress fractures, for instance. Anywhere they can, they do a radius to, to the weld. They put a radius in instead of an edge and a, and a sharp angle. These again are ways of overlapping, that's overlap right there, overlapping the weld and not having a place where you get so much uh, possibility of stress fractures from the vibration of the machine. That's one of the reasons these things are so tough. We've had them in our rental fleet for years. We usually carry eight to 10 or 12 of them. 
they rent for $27,000 a month, and we just don't have problems with the frames. We don't have hardly any problems with the tractors at all. They're really solid, and that's one of the reasons why. Um, the winch is a 30,000-pound winch. It's operated from inside the cab. There's a switch under here to engage the winch so that you can operate from the cab. When it's not in operation mode, you need to put the, the switch up, otherwise you can't start the, you can't move the machine because it disengages the hydraulics so you don't run over somebody back here. <coughs> so these machines have oversized anti-clog radiator systems on them and a high volume reversing fan. So you've got your air to air, your engine cooling and your hydraulic cooling all back here. It's all in a V shape. This works really neat because you get into the engine compartment, you can blow these things out really easily. This reversing fan goes, we have them set to run about every 15 minutes, but you can also engage the fan in the cab if your engine's starting to overheat, got a lot of cattail duff or something in the, in the grid here, you can actually hit the fan and it'll reverse on demand. The hydraulic tank is on this side, uh, also has a top fill. It's a 75 gallon tank, I believe. If you look up here, you can see there's a visual sight glass to check the level of the fluid. Gives you a, a high and low, and it should be somewhere in between when it's cold. So very easy to tell where your hydraulics are at. I'm gonna move in here. This is where you get at checking your oil. Also observation port, oil fill. Everything's right there, nice little door. Don't have to mess with the rest of that. Everything is guarded, that's the other thing I really like about them. All the exhaust and all the system on top, it's all got guards on it so you can drop a tree on it and not kill it, which uh, the old days you used to be able to kind of hurt that, that exhaust and breather system up there. One of the things about this cabin that I wanted to talk about is this has safety Lexan all the way around and it's tinted. So you find you're not cooking so much when you're in one of these in, in uh, sunshine down in Florida or where I just was out in Arizona. So that's a feature. And also, if you look at the slant of the cab, this has some of the best visibility for the operator in the industry. Another thing while we're out here about the cab is if you look up there, you don't see any windshield wiper. Anybody that's run this kind of equipment with Lexan knows that if you have dust on the screen and you have a windshield wiper, you also have marks and when the sun hits it, you can't even see. This has an air knife windshield, windshield system, so it blows high pressure air down across the windshield to blow it off. If you're gonna wash this kind of window, use water, use a squeegee. Don't rub it with a rag, make sure your operators understand that. Otherwise, you've got a couple thousand dollars to replace that glass in there. Something I didn't point out on the head that I might as well point out is that the, when you, you can put this head up in the air and it's got a lockout system, makes it a lot easier when you're sharpening tools, changing tools, whatever you're doing, you, you put the head up in the air, you pull that pin, you put that up under the cylinder and put the pin back in. That way nobody gets hurt, it can't fall on you. And I like to work on them about here. I'm old, I can't get on my knees anymore. Okay, so we're gonna go jump in the cab and I'll point out some of the features in the cab. One of the things about this cab that you'll notice, and uh, certainly when somebody gets in it, they will notice is that it's operator friendly. Barco has kind of gone the extra mile to take care of the operator. And when you think about it, that's the guy that's making you the money. And if he's tired halfway through the day, doesn't want to be there, he's not going to do the maintenance and maybe he's not going to like running the machine and he's not going to do as good a job and whatever. But the operator is like your most important tool once you get the machine. And this cab is really comfortable to run all day long got adjustable seats, we'll go through all that. Before I get up there, I'll point out a couple of safety features, uh, which I was pointing out to Brad there a little while ago. Everything in this cab has a sensor on it. So the door has a sensor on it, the, latch has, the lock for the door has a sensor on it, 
The exit door on the other side has a sensor on it. The lock has a sensor on it. Also, so what that does is anytime, and there's also some sensors in the seat and in the, in the seat rest. What that does is it makes it so you can't hardly make a mistake. So when Brad wanted to get out of the machine a little while ago, as soon as that door opened, it disengaged the hydraulics and the tractor won't go anywhere, can't move it, can't hit a joystick or make anything happen to cause an accident. And that's a really good plus for these tractors. So we're inside the cab. One of the first features you're gonna see when you're inside the cab is that all your instrumentation is no longer above your head. It used to be in the older Barcos, you had to look up here while you're working. You always had to look up here and see what your engine was doing. What they've done instead is given you a nice cubby hole Put your manuals or whatever else you want to carry with you. It's got a JVC radio. People really, really like that. I'm old school. I never run a radio in a machine because I want to hear what my tractor's doing. It's a good radio, I'm told. Uh, it's got rear view mirrors. They're not that helpful, but they kind of let you know something's off to the side of you that you can't see in the rear view camera. So that's a good feature because a lot of machines don't have that and a lot of cameras don't pick up. You've got a blind spot just like on in your car. Um, got a rear view camera, it's a wide angle rear view camera, so it's got really good vision behind you and you can see really well for, with that. Um, all the operating console has been moved down uh, to the right hand uh, console. So all your buttons and everything that runs the tractor and all of your uh, engine di dynamics, everything that you need to see is right on this screen right here. We, set, we have the AC, we have the, this has a uh, electric over me mechanical shift system, so you just hit the button to go from high gear to low gear. This tractor runs about, up to about six and a half miles an hour in high gear, or in low gear, and runs about 12 and a half miles an hour in high gear. I don't recommend running 12 miles an hour because it really is hard to steer at that point, but it will do it. This is your differential lock, so if you're needing to engage uh, both tires on the front end and have them, have them stay together, Getting out of a situation, you can hit the front differential lock, rear differential lock, or you can lock all of them. Next button controls the winch. Put the switch in the back on, and then you control the winch from here in and out, and it's got a free spool capability on it. This button controls the reversing fan, so if you're seeing your temperature start to rise while you're operating, and you've got a bunch of stuff getting into the radiators back there, you can hit the button, and it'll do a, a, a reversing cycle by just pushing the button and do that manually. Next to that is, well, this is the air knife windshield wiper here that turns it on. This is your lights. This has uh, eight LEDs around it, so when you turn it on, it's kind of like having sunlight. You can work all night with this tractor. The next button up is your actual hydraulic. Once this is engaged and the light turns green, all your hydraulics are engaged. Now you can drive the tractor, move the head, turn everything on. Without this button, nothing works. Uh, next to that is the parking brake. Next to that is the float for the head, which uh, when you're going backwards doing your cleaning up passes, you can hit float and the head will just follow along. Uh, the ground next to that is actually engaging the actual attachment. You put that on that actually engages the attachment. These are double locking switches, so you gotta push it down, push it down, and lock it in. And that just makes it a safety feature so they're not accidentally bumped into place. Kill switch, if you have an emergency, this kills the whole tractor, everything. I was talking about how comfortable this tractor is, the cab is. Um, this is a four-way adjustable seat, so it adjusts lumbar, it adjusts back and forth, it adjusts up and down. It's an air ride seat, which you can adjust with a, with a, with a button under here and another knob under here. Also slides back and forth. It's very comfortable. It's actually got a full harness for, you can do the seat belt part or you can do a full harness. Um, I prefer the seat belt. I just don't want to go to that windshield if I could hit something or fall off a cliff with it, so being strapped in is rather important. Uh, I was talking about the visibility. So when I'm sitting in this tractor, like I was just sitting in a competitor's tractor a couple of days ago, and the, um, the steel part of the tractor was up here. And so I can't see anywhere down in this part of the, of the where the mulching head is or see behind the mulching head or see what's going on. The Barco have such great visibility that I can sit right here and I can see my head. I can see the chains that are behind it. I can control when I'm backing up. I can see how the debris is piling up and I control the angle of my head when I'm backing up because I can see exactly what's going on with that head. So the visibility is just incredible in this, in this machine all the way around. So these are multifunction joysticks. Um, first off, this is your control for your driving. That's your articulation. The top two buttons on this side control the door. Top two buttons on, or yeah, top two buttons on this side control the back and forth on the hydraulic 
uh, brush guard. Uh, one of these is a horn when it's turned on. There's the horn, horn's back here. Uh, the other two buttons over here are not engaged with anything. If we had uh, other features on here, then they could, they could hook these buttons up to do something else. I also didn't talk about, this is a foot control travel. These machines also can be set up with joystick control travel where you would run it like a skid steer. Foot control is for going forward and going backward. This, you can, you got a lot more control of the tractor movements forward and backward with a foot control than you do with joystick. So now I want to talk a little bit about the uses, what people use these machines for, what our customers use them for, what you might want to use them for. So um, these mulching machines are used in power line right away, pipeline right away, clearing and maintenance, in putting in new right away. They're used in land clearing and site prep a lot nowadays. Uh, I was just at a logging show in North Carolina and at least a dozen loggers came up to me and said, we are going to start putting in a mulching application behind our logging operations because they're doing a lot more logging for development and that kind of thing. And it's just a good addition to their business. Uh, I can't think of anything I haven't used these in in some fashion or another. Fire mitigation, fuel load mitigation, uh, highway and uh, highway right of ways, byway right of ways, uh, uh, fuel, uh, what am I gonna try? Uh, tree thinning. When we go into a lot that's got a bunch of regen pine and they want to thin it, we'll go and cut lines through and, and, uh, and uh, create a situation so the other trees can grow more. Uh, line of sight for surveyors. Uh, I mentioned land clearing and site prep. That's a really big business for these machines. We rent a lot of these machines to people who are doing land clearing and site prep with them. Uh, you can go anywhere from doing uh, the brush or the logging slash and the stumps to digging the stumps out of the ground, having the root ball and everything up, mulching it up, and turning it all back down into a layer of mulch on top of the soil, which then they push off on a, like a, like a land, land development operation where you put houses or, or structures. They take all that mulch and dirt and they push it off. What happens then is, uh, is uh, instead of hauling 25 or 30 loads of debris to a landfill at $250 a pop and whatever it is now, $150 tipping fee, uh, you're leaving all that right there and you're just moving off with a bulldozer. It, it um, composts down and becomes topsoil that they use around the property to put their berms in and whatever. So that's a big business for these machines. So again, I'm John Flournoy with National Equipment Dealers. If you have any questions, uh, you can find uh, a lot of information on our website at nedealers.com. Uh, you can also call me or call any of our uh, experts. We have uh, a lot of different kinds of equipment and we're happy to Take your calls, answer your questions.